updated. We have two parts today. The first part, we will uh, know more about the SEG software uh, interface and tool parts and how we can deal with that. After that, we will make a complete demo from scratch for a horizontal visit uh, up to making the fabrication drawings for uh, this potential. Uh, for part one, we will discuss the uh, SEG uh, software user interface, uh, the available modules in SEG, and how we can create uh, those modules, uh, the project data and how we can deal with it, uh, equipment design data and settings, main elements, uh, the main elements which uh, make the main components of the equipment, like head, shell, cone, body flanges, and the attachments for main elements. Regarding the user interface, uh, we have right here at the top the main tabs, which includes file elements, simply edit setting and the tables and we will discuss the uh, orders or the patterns in each uh, pattern or, or, or in each type of those here on the right hand side uh, on the left hand side we have the tree view in this tree view which is the SEGD includes the uh, equipment information and the project information. We have some levels here and we will discuss the levels of the three. On the right hand side, the cool box, which includes the elements of uh, the equipment. When you select the vessel, for example, you will get the main elements right here. And if you select uh, a main element like head or shell, you will get the attachments of this element on this tip toolbox. Here on the middle, we have the main area. In the main area, uh, you will find the information of the selected node. For example, if you select the uh, project uh, node, you will get the project information in this area. And if you select the visual node, you will get the design data information. If you select any other node, like uh, cone or shell or head, you will get the information of this element right here. Below here, the license period of the uh, uh, of your uh, license, including the end date. Uh, the user interface uh, toolbars here for the element, you will find those uh, orders or those patterns for uh, each tab. For files, for example, you can start a new project or open an old project. You can save your current project as another project with the same uh, with another name. You can close or uh, exit from all the uh, application. This three save button you can use it in case of importing a MDB file and some other features. Here on the uh, elements tab, you will find the uh, elements of uh, the equipment, and we will discuss this uh, in deep. For the assembly tab, you will find the button for starting the assembly to send information to uh, Autodesk Inventor software. And during the running, you can stop the running at uh, a point. After that, if you would like to complete or modify, you can click on Start to proceed your assembly again. Uh, on the Assembly tab, you can start Exit Changer module or Pressure Visit module. Here, this button for the nozzle opening. If you would like to make a nozzle opening in shell courses and uh, head blades, you can do it from the uh, Assembly tab by using Opening. You can create a sheet metal flat pattern for all sheet plates in your project by using this feature, which is create flat pattern. 
for storage tanks, you can use shell development to make shell development for shell plates of the storage tank. It's only for storage tanks. Update item number button. Uh, this button is very important to update the item number of all elements after creating the bill of material of your equipment. Uh, to send all uh, updated item numbers to the inventor elements in your project. If you would like to stop this update, just click on stop, like uh, start simply and stop. This for update item number and stop the item number. Here, mass precision, if you would like to uh, minimize the precision of the uh, calculated mass from uh, Autodesk Inventor, you can minimize it from here. For example, if you would like to minimize the precision from five to uh, three or two or one, you can uh, change it from here, from this form. You can save active document. Uh, if you open a new uh, part, a new assembly, for example, and create something during uh, your work, you can make save as from this document. Uh, or uh, save this document by using this button. If you are uh, open, uh, open uh, more than one document, you can save all of them by using save all documents from here. Uh, this is a calculator for the arguments and we will uh, know more about it. From this button, you can open uh, an Autodesk Inventor file from another project or uh, any other path. Uh, like drawing BART assembly, you can open it directly from here if you would like. You can save uh, save as uh, the current uh, uh, element on Autodesk Inventor, you can save it. Or save copy as from the current uh, element that you open it uh, on Autodesk Inventor. On the same button, which is assembly, you can make a, a parametric relationship between uh, Two parameters in two different elements or on the same element so you can make a parametric relationship from the edit uh, tab, Ahmed, yes uh, before you move on to the next uh, the thing i would i have a query regarding the step so what's the difference between open an inventor and the open icon on the first particular the file menu what's the difference between the two if there's an please. open icon on the first yeah, and what is the difference between open and inventor? No difference. If you would like to open it directly from SEG, it's just an option. If you would like to open it from here. Okay. okay. No difference between it if you if you open it directly from Autodesk Inventor, it's the same. Okay, is that okay or still yeah that's okay okay uh, from edit tab you can make some uh, orders uh, the most important orders here uh, the uh, reset inventor model by clicking on this button which is reset inventor model you will delete all inventor elements parts simply uh, from your model in this case, you will need to come back to assembly tab and start your model again. Sometimes it's during uh, your uh, trying, uh, uh, you may need to uh, repeat your model again. So if you would like to make this, you can reset inventor uh, model. Uh, another uh, order here, which is reset inventor item. Usually you can use this uh, uh, order in case of making uh, some changes by hand in uh, an element, like uh, for example, if you uh, modify uh, something in uh, the head or on uh, a David or something like that created by SEG library, and you uh, you make some changes manually, after that you cannot uh, make a, a, a flip back or uh, make undo for your uh, changes. So by clicking on reset inventor item, uh, you will delete this item only. Uh, when you click on a start button to uh, 
repeat the modification. Okay, so if you make some changes uh, on the element and you would like to delete it, this element only by selecting the node from the tree and by clicking on reset inventor item, you will uh, delete this element uh, when you create on start again. Uh, reset changes, uh, this feature we will discuss it when you uh, click on save button, for example, uh, and uh, you find that you will not need this change. So you can make a redo by reset changes on uh, this part. Import access file. Uh, you can import uh, the access database file which is supported from the LF from here, or you can use it directly from the shortcut menu. On the visual setting, uh, on uh, the setting tab, you will find the equipment setting. From this button, you can define the uh, visual position, uh, direction of the assembly, the uh, dimensions of delivered plate. Uh, this skin, you can change the uh, SEG skin. You will find many different skins. You can select the suitable skin uh, for you to use it in your application. The app setting, uh, in the app setting, many different options uh, in this uh, setting to define uh, if you would like to make the uh, size of the nozzles appear in then or NBS, for example. Uh, if you would like to make a preview for elements or make a rendering for elements during creation or not, if you would like to make it in behind, it is a default. But if you would like to make it appear during the creation, making a, a preview or rendering for elements during the creation, you can do it from here. And the many different options regarding the bill of material. Here, the reset system file, this button. Uh, uh, if you uh, install SEG for the first time, you will uh, need to uh, reset system files at the beginning before starting any project by clicking on this button. It's for one time, only after uh, installing is easy for the first time. You can make a backup from your project and restore this backup from here. You can define a border from the standard borders in SEG. Uh, the same uh, button here for our calculator, which is uh, the and on the assembly tab, the same one here on the setting. A custom drawing and uh, from this uh, feature, you can uh, import your custom IDW drawing to use it as a reference drawing uh, in SCG. Anytime you will need to create a new drawing, you will uh, SCG will. Uh, come back to the reference drawing that you import and use it in the uh, final draw. The tables, in the tables tab, you will find the bill of material table, which includes all uh, elements in your uh, project, not on the uh, vessel only, in, in all projects. For example, if you have two or three uh, vessels in your project, they will appear in the bill of material here. The coupling table, nozzle load table, nozzle table, flange table, gasket table, fitting table, pipe table, and the nozzle orientation table. And here the cost river uh, feature, or uh, you can uh, make a material estimated material cost report for your uh, equipment or for your project uh, by defining. Uh, defining the uh, cost of each material uh, bare ton. Here in the user interface, we will uh, discuss some important features uh, on the SEG. One of them is the uh, profile. By defining the uh, profile here, the information of the uh, profile. When you send us an email by using the bug report, those information will uh, will send to our technical team to be able to return uh, your uh, reply. 
So those information uh, like your email, your name, and your uh, phone number are important to be written in a correct way because when you open the uh, report bug, for example, if you would like to send us uh, an issue that you have, uh, you uh, we will uh, those information will be sent by uh, email to us. Okay, another uh, two important uh, tabs here. The uh, tutorial button here, and the uh, if you click on the refresh tab at below here, you will find the uh, some tutorial videos for uh, SEG, and you can select uh, from them, and you can play it on the uh, SEG uh, uh, application directly instead of opening a browser or something like that. So you can run the tutorial directly on uh, SEG uh, platform. Or you can open the YouTube channel directly. So if you click on this, you will open the browser. And one uh, another important button, which is templates. Here you will find some standard uh, or uh, Rebuilt projects for real projects. You can select uh, one of them to know how uh, this uh, project is built. For example, for uh, this slug catcher uh, pressure vessel type, you can know how this equipment is built by uh, get this project and select the allocation for this one. When you open this project, you will. Uh, uh, check the tree of this element and know how uh, each element in this uh, tree is, is done and, and uh, built and how you can make the complete uh, project simply for uh, those four visits right here. Or some uh, simple uh, visits like this is a small receiver for example, you, uh, you can check how you can make an overlap between the shell and head, you can figure from this images that this uh, head is inside the uh, shell. So when you create this project, you will know how you can make an overlap between the shell and the head, for example. So in each uh, sample of those, you will know some uh, important uh, new features in uh, SEG by creating a new uh, project and uh, from this uh, template and to study how it's uh, uh, created. Okay, so now let's go back here. Uh, from the setting tab, you can change the uh, scan of uh, the application. For example, here if we go to the setting, you can find that uh, you have many different uh, settings. Uh, if you change uh, one of them, you can figure that the, uh, the uh, colors and the background of the application will change. So you can select the suitable uh, skin uh, for uh, your application, which suits uh, your uh, requirements. Here, the, we will now we will discuss the SEG module and the available modules in, in SEG. And the difference between them uh, for the first the module, which is the overall. The overall module uh, will make all features for all uh, other modules will appear inside. Like for heat exchanger, for example, you will need a cube sheet, uh, expansion joint. Uh, so those elements will not appear in case of horizontal visit or both for vertical visit or storage tanks, for example, because those features are mainly uh, related to uh, heat exchange. In case of using overall, all features will appear, uh, like the duct features, storage tanks features, roof, bottom plates, radial roof, the ex uh, uh, annular plates, all of that will appear on the overall video. 
So here you can figure that we uh, have seven different modules. Uh, the first one, which is a horizontal, vertical pressure vessels, heat exchanger, ducts, storage tanks, spherical tanks, and equipment viving. By defining the uh, project name and the project location, you can select the uh, suitable module from here. If you uh, would like to use many different modules at the same time, so you will make the overall. The project data. Project data will be uh, separate in three different levels. The first level, which is the project level, the first node here. Okay, and the project level, you will define the project information, like project number, project name, plant name, client, location, manufacturer, order number, and some other information. After defining it, you can click on save to save those information for your project. Those information, some of them will appear on uh, your drawing. Uh, title block, and uh, they are sent to the uh, the drawing uh, information. So, in case of making your uh, title block, your own title block, or you can make a relationship between texts uh, that you entered in your title block and those parameters here. So, anytime you send information from your project, it will be reflected directly. To the draw. For example, uh, in your uh, title block, you will need to link between the project name and a text in your title uh, block. So you can make uh, a text uh, with a relation between this parameter. So anytime you will modify this parameter, it will reflect directly to your uh, title block. Okay, and we will discuss how we can do that. The equipment design data. Uh, the second level, which is the equipment level, in case of selecting the equipment, you can define the design data of this equipment. Like the design pressure, uh, construction code, design temperature, external and internal design uh, pressure and temperature, maximum allowable working pressure, and many other fields. You can select between them from those check boxes here on the right hand side. So if you select this checkbox, this field will be saved and exported to uh, the drawing in case of exporting the design data table to, to your drawing. So this field will be exported in case of selecting uh, this checkbox. If you don't like to export one of those information, you will need to deselect this checkbox. That after that, click on save to make this field as uh, not used field. And if you would like to define the new field by using add row, or directly you can double click on the cell and re-modify the information. Another option by importing the information by using the export of, uh, uh, import from uh, cell sheet and this button is uh, a new button here uh, we will uh, discuss it on the demo inshallah so many different options on the uh, design data on the same level which is the equipment level you will need to define the vessel setting in the vessel setting tab you will define the Position of the vessel, it's vertical or horizontal or sloped. The direction of the assembly. In case of horizontal, for example, you will define the uh, direction of the assembly. If you would like to make it from the left direction to right direction or from right to left direction. In case of vertical, you will need to define the position or the direction of the assembly from bottom to top or from top to bottom okay here uh, on the uh, units you will select the suitable units in your project if it's in millimeter or english units 
the details of the equipment like equipment service, equipment tag, and serial number. The equipment tag is the same of the diesel name on the tree. So if we come back for to the first slide, the name here of the equipment it's the diesel tag. So if you change the diesel tag, the name of this equipment will change here. That's the tag number. Okay. Here for the delivered plate data, you will define the delivered plate dimensions in your project. And this field is very important uh, because it's easy to use it to calculate uh, the uh, circumference uh, shell course uh, length and calculate how many sheets will require to, to create this circumference. And it's easy to use it to, in case of making a roof plate arrangement or bottom plate arrangement. So those fields uh, are very important uh, because they are, they will be used on the uh, calculations in this uh, issue. Um, uh, can you go back to the previous slide? Again, please. Uh, yes, uh, we have a query regarding the delivered plate data. So uh, here we we understand that the the you can give only one particular uh, dimension of delivered plate. What if we have you know two different uh, dimension of plates that we are using? Here you can define only one delivered plate dimensions because this easy will go to one reference to know how uh, which which plate uh, you will use. Uh, in, uh, in on shell, or you can define only one deliverable blade dimension. Uh, no, so uh, can you uh, see uh, what I understand is when we are defining the individual shell courses on the actual equipment, uh, we can define the length of the shell courses there, correct? No, the shell course is a deliverable blade. When you are modeling that. No, that's uh, my query is uh, when you are actually modeling the equipment uh, using SEG, there we can define the length of the individual shell courses, correct? Yes. So and what is the advantage example, of this particular tab? For example, if you have a large diameter vessel, a large diameter vessel, let's say five meters, for example. Okay. So the circumference okay. will come back here. And open the uh, calculator or open the uh, this uh, arc length calculator. If we have a uh, five meters diameter uh, uh, of the uh, a vessel, okay, and uh, the so let's calculate the arc length, the total circumference length here. You can figure that it's uh, uh, fifteen meters. Okay, 0.7. So that means if you have a blade with 12 meters, sorry, if we have a blade with 12 meters, it will not be enough to make the total circumference of the shell. So SEG directly will calculate the required sheet to complete this lens. Okay, now you get it. Okay. Okay. In case of of making uh, okay, so sorry for that. Another thing here for the yes, for the uh, roof plate arrangement, for example, here the blades uh, which are used on the uh, Roof blade or bottom blade, those plates, uh, lengths and widths are required uh, to uh, make this arrangement. So, this information is very important, which is the delivered blade dimensions to make this arrangement automatically for the roof and the bottom plates. Okay. Okay.
Okay, now for the main elements. Uh, for the main elements, uh, you will find uh, different uh, main elements. You can use it to generate the main equipment uh, body. Uh, here, uh, the, the most important elements uh, at the beginning on the main elements tab here, like uh, shell and head. And in each element of those, uh, we have many different uh, configurations and the types. Like on the head, for example, we have more than 15 types of, of, head, of heads, like uh, hemispherical head, hemispherical head with negative straight flange, Ellipsoidal head, uh, ellipsoidal head with crown and the knuckle radius, uh, conical uh, head with closed end, conical head with open end, flat uh, head, uh, end blade. You will find many different types on the head. The same for shell, uh, many different types of shell, and we will discuss the difference between them. Uh, cone. The cones, standard flanges, uh, design the flanges, which is the body flanges. You can use it on heat exchangers, on on body flanges, on diesels. Uh, blind flanges, uh, flanged convections, which makes two connected flanges uh, in one time with a gasket. Tube sheet gaps. If you would like to make a gap between elements. Uh, for the for a weld preparation, you can make this gap by using this element. Uh, standard reducers, uh, those are the fitting fittings uh, group. You can make standard reducers, elbows, keys, uh, threading, coupling, uh, X, nibble, plug. For uh, other elements like gasket, gasket with bus partition, expansion joint, Y joint. For the skirt as a uh, will of bar, valve, uh, nanometer, bump, end closure, agitator, end blade, hold the section. And for the ABI elements, you can carry the annular plate, compression ring, radial roof, radial zone roof, range roof, range blade, and range slope the bottom. For spherical elements, you can make the spherical tank end and spherical uh, segments. For ducts, you can make uh, inlet and outlet flange duct, rectangular duct, and inside each element of those, you will find a large number of different configurations for uh, for, for for each one of them. Uh, the attachments. Here, if you create a head, for example, in your tree, and in case of selecting this head, uh, which is on the third level on the SEG tree, you will find on the element tab uh, many different attachments for available attachments for this head. For example, uh, in case of head, you can, uh, when you select it on the tree, you will be able to add a skirt to this head, add support pipe or support beam to this head, add many different types of nozzles like nozzle with external projection, nozzle with internal and external projection, which is head nozzle type B, weldlet nozzle, coupling, coupling nozzle, stub outlet. You can add some other attachments like Benjamin plate, vortex breaker, front pass partition, clad. You can add uh, platform, external uh, reinforcing guard, insulation clips, Insulation, you can add different types of lifting lugs to this. In case of shell, for example, if you add a shell and if you select it, when you open the element tab, you will be able to add many different attachments to this shell. Like on the support group, you can add saddles, stack the saddle, legs, lugs, scare, anchor chair, many different types. The same for nozzles, lifting lugs, and the external attachments like adding a name blade or external stiffening ring, insulation ring, many different elements. For the internal attachments, the same for the vertical and uh, the 
the 4D platforms and course. Now we will uh, make a real uh, sample in uh, in this uh, training. We will create, inshallah, a horizontal pressure visit, and we will know how to define the project information and the uh, design data of the equipment, and how to de define the setting of the equipment, how to create the main elements like head and shell, and select the suitable type for our case. Creating a support saddle. How we can create uh, two saddles. They are the same on all dimensions except the location of the saddle. And we will make one of them uh, is a sliding saddle. So how we can use the same option. So in this step, we will know how to use the same as option. Create. Uh, head nozzles and some attachments. How to create shell nozzle and uh, some other attachments. How to make a nozzle rolling, creating uh, 2D drawings on and uh, detail drawing and GA drawing. So in this demo, we will uh, make this equipment with a diameter one meter point five. Uh, the ellipsoidal head dimensions, the shell lenses, we will make shell, three shell courses, one of them is 2 meters, 1.4 and another 2 meters. We will add two nozzles on the uh, this head, one of them is 4 inches and the second by 6 inches. Uh, manway on the right head, we will add manway uh, with 18 inches on the right head. We support saddles, we will add name blades, lift in blunts, boot with a forged uh, hub and the lips uh, to the uh, middle shell course. To, and after that, we will add a drain to this bottom head and add a vortex breaker. And uh, we will add uh, 36 uh, nozzle uh, inches on this shell course and how we can add drips to this one. So now let's come back to uh, SEG and start creating our new project. From here, we will click on New button and we will define the project name. And select the location. Let's add it on the desktop. Now you will be able to select the suitable module for your case. For here we will select the overall uh, project or horizontal pressure visit for example. In case of selecting horizontal pressure visits, the other features for storage tanks or ducts will not appear. So we will select horizontal pressure visit and click on finish. Now SEG will start creating as a new project and create the uh, files. Here on the SEG tree, you will find uh, on the middle area, you will find uh, three areas, the three view. So you can move it and put it on the suitable place for you. So let's add it uh, on the uh, standard location, which is the left hand side. The same for the toolbox, you can move it anywhere. And for example, let's add it to the right hand side. And here the middle area for defining the uh, element. Now let's select the project and let's define the uh, project number. Now we will define the project number here. Like that. And from the project name, let's define this name as blend name client and owner
the location, manufacturer, the order number, prepared by, checked by. After that, we will tell the other data and click on save. Now the data is saved for the project. Anytime you will come back to the project by clicking on another node and come back to the project node, you will find those data as Now we will rename this equipment, give it a name, and uh, we will uh, define the design data for this equipment and this. Now we will uh, rename this visit as EA100, for example. Now you need to make a refresh by selecting the node again to refresh this form. Now we will uh, define the design. We will make some uh, other uh, different uh, options to know how we can deal with the design. The first uh, option, uh, you can keep, uh, you can deselect all checkboxes and select the required fields only, like the construction code, and now you will define the construction code for example and like that for example for the internal design pressure you can remove the second unit for example and define the value and make it for only one unit and click on save so that's a way to define the uh, design data Okay, after that, you can click on save to save the project information. Now, anytime you will come back to the project data, you will find that the saved data are saved. So now we know how to select the cell itself and redefine it and select the required field only. You can add a new field if you would like, like the designer for example, or uh, the uh, window pool, for example, uh, window pool, build pool, for example here, and the uh, units, you can make it as only dash, like this. So you can figure that we have a new field here for a window pool, like that. Uh, all cells should be include a value. So if you have a value with a null value, you can write it as null or make a dash like this. Because if you, for example, if you would like to uh, add a cell without a value, you will receive that. You will need to fill this uh, field. Another uh, option to uh, Tell this design data by creating uh, an Excel sheet and import it to uh, SE. So now let's let's create uh, an Excel sheet here. So we will open the design data and this Excel sheet. Now we will need to fill three columns on it and directly with the data. Yes. So for example, we will need to add the construction pool, for example, directly. So it's ABI and the this cell is empty. Now the second field will be Design pressure, for example, and sub like that. Okay, now you will say so. You will need to fill three columns like the same on the design data. Okay, so you will need to fill item description, the value, and unit. And from here, we will import this Excel sheet. So we will import the design data. Like that. Now you can figure that we import the design data which is created on the Excel sheet. In case of save, you will save those information. In case of moving to another node and come back 
without saving, everything will come back again because we don't save the information. Okay, so now you know about, about three different ways. The first way is uh, changing the value by double clicking on the cell itself and remodifying, or by creating a new rows, or by importing from Excel sheet. And now we know how to create the Excel sheet in a right format to import it uh, to uh, the design data. Okay. In case of making a, a heat exchanger, you will find uh, four columns instead of three, because we have a shell side data and a tube side data. Okay. Now uh, uh, let's add some other fields here to the design data, for example, and let's click save. So we have some information here for the design. Now we will define the equipment setting by clicking on the visit and the come back to the uh, setting tab. Now we will open the equipment setting. From the equipment setting, we will define Emma, the equipment. Yes? Emma, I have a query on the, the design data tab. Uh, suppose now here you have listed around, uh, you know, you have listed a lot of parameters that you can enter in the design data. Suppose I uh, I need to use would whatever you mind, Would you mind to speak slowly to understand, please? Sorry? Uh, slowly, please. Okay. Okay. In the design data, you have listed a lot of design parameters. Okay. Yes. Suppose now in in a particular drawing, I don't want all of this design data. I want to select only say 10 of the I parameters from this list. Can I do that? Sorry, we, we just say that. We just say that by selecting the required fields only here you can figure that we select those only instead of all okay. By by selecting okay, the got checkbox it. On, the, on the right hand side. We discuss three different ways. The first way by defining the uh, re, re, re change or modify the cell itself and select it from here. Now, by by deselecting all, if you deselect all, so you can select the required field only and redefine the value. That's the first uh, uh, way. The second way by adding your needed new values. Okay. The third way by importing the Excel sheet directly from the Excel sheet that you create. Okay, those are three different ways to modify the bill of material, uh, the design data table. Uh, is this point is clear or still? Okay. Yes, yes, okay. it is clear, Emma. Thank you. Okay, okay, you are welcome. Now for the uh, equipment setting itself, here we will define the position of the visit. In, in our case, it's a horizontal visit, but let's know more about the available options here. Uh, uh, Two more options for sloped bezel with a sloped angle. So if we select the slope, for example, you can figure that the angle, uh, sloped angle will appear. In case of vertical, you can select the direction of the assembly in case of vertical from top direction to bottom direction or from bot top to bottom. So you have two options for the vertical. And in case of horizontal, you can make your assembly from right to left or left to right. Okay. For units regarding to the units, you can create your project in millimeter or in inches. Uh, uh, for the equipment details, like the service of the uh, equipment, and the tag number is the same uh, visit name, the serial number. The delivered blade dimensions should be defined in a correct way. Let's make it for, uh, for example, let's make it uh, uh, nine meters and two meters point four, and let's click save. Now, uh, when we select the equipment, you can figure that on the uh, this toolbar, the main elements here. So you can add elements directly from this toolbar, or you can add it from the elements tab at the top right here. So when you select 
the equipment, we will add one of those main elements. In our case, here we will add a ellipsoidal head. So let's add a head. And let's click Add. Now we have this head on the uh, SEG tree. As you can figure, now we have three different levels, as we discussed. The first level is the project level. After that, the equipment level. After that, the uh, element level, or the main element level. Uh, here, when we select the left head, you can figure that we have the head type list. And the name of this head, it's the left head. The name of the selected element appears here below the uh, uh, element type. And from the list, you can figure that you will find more than 15 types of different heads. The first type is the ellipsoidal head, which is a half of ellipse. Half of ellipse, not including any crown or knuckle dimensions. For the ellipsoidal head with crown and the knuckle radius, you can figure that this type of head includes crown radius and knuckle radius. And for the red color uh, font, uh, for the red, uh, red font here, the crown radius value is 0.9 uh, by the uh, from the inside diameter, and the knuckle radius value is 0.17 from the uh, inside diameter. If you select the flat head, it's the same configuration which includes the crown and the knuckle radius, but the knuckle value. You can mod modify it manually, and the crown radius value is related to this equation. So you will find some other types of the heads. Each one of them includes the crown and the knuck radius according to this standard. And you can make your own user define the crown and the knuck radius by selecting this type, which is user defined the crown and the knuck radius. So in this case, you can define the knuck and the crown radius. Anyway, a standard caps, so uh, it's a fitting, so you can define it from here. Diffuser head, which, which includes a convex tool inside like this. Uh, convex head, flat head, hemispherical head with straight flange. Hemispherical head with negative straight flange is this type usually used in division two because the center line here is. Uh, Moved outside the head. The crown head was uh, knuckle at the end. Cone head was closed in. Cone head without uh, uh, knuckle at the end. Circular flat end, hold the circular flat. End. So there are many types of the heads. Let's just select the uh, ellipsoidal head type and define the inside diameter of this head as 1 meter 0.5 and define the thickness as 10 millimeters. Define the straight flange to be 50 millimeters. Minimum thickness after forming the head ratio. Make it uh, 1 to 2. And the lab length. If you would like to make this head uh, overlap to the second head, like uh, we discussed on the uh, sample here on the this template here, one of those samples for this uh, air receiver. You can figure that this head is uh, inside the shell. So if you would like to make an overlap between elements, you can define the value for the overlap of this head inside or outside the second element. Now we will leave it zero and click on save. In the same element you will find more options like uh, this head you can make it from one piece as a one bar or you can make it from two pieces like this include a longitudinal building line on the pieces. If you take a look to the image on the right hand side you can figure that you can make this head from two elements, including a welding line between them, or you can make it from segments like this. So you can define the uh, cut diameter, which is the middle piece on the inside, 
the inside diameter of the middle piece and you can define the number of the remaining segments define the first longitudinal welding line orientation but in our case we will make it as a one piece because the diameter is not large so we will keep it like this now we will add another element which is shell so let's add an one When we select the element here, as we discussed, you will find the element type list. After that, the name of the element below it. And from this list, you will uh, select the required type of this uh, shell type. And you can figure that you have many different types, around 10 different types of uh, shell types. The first type is a bind. If you would like to define the shell course as a bind, so you will select this type, which is pipe, and define the size schedule. And if you would like to define this with a thickness, you can select on user defined thickness to be able to define the thickness of this pipe manually instead of selecting a standard schedule. Define the length of the pipe and the material of this pipe depending on the uh, ASME section two part D. You will select the table. After that, so make a search for the material. For example, if we search for SA15, sorry, like this, you can find the grades of this material here. You can select the suitable grade and click on that. Okay. Or you can directly modify it from here by writing the material type. That's the first type, which is pipe. Now, the second type, which is shell without building lines. It's in case of making uh, a quick estimation, and you would like to make uh, an LBG, for example, and you would like to calculate the uh, approximately weight of this LBG. Uh, you can uh, make a one shell course without any welding lines with uh, 50 meters length, for example. So it's a one element, so you will get the correct weight, uh, the correct volume, correct uh, values, but with a one element only, okay? By using shell cores without any welding lines, that's in case if you would like to make a quick uh, element without uh, making a fabrication details or uh, the fabrication requirements inside. In case of, of shell, you will make a shell from plate, so it's a sheet metal. So anytime if you would like to make sheet metal flat pattern for it, you can do that. It's not available in those first types because it's, it's a vibe, standard vibe. You will not make a sheet metal for it. For it. It's same for a shell without any welding lines, so you will not be able to create a sheet metal flat button for it. But in case of shell, uh, you will be able uh, to create this uh, shell type, uh, which is created from a sheet metal plates. And it's easy automatically calculate the required number of sheets depending on the delivered plates. As we discussed in case of large vessel diameter or sm small delivered blade dimensions, the SEG will calculate, depending on the delivered blade dimensions, the required number of shell plates and create it automatically. And if you would like to define it as a se equal segments, you can make it like this from enable segments and define the required number of elements directly from here. So you can make the shell as if you take a look to the image on the right hand side, you will find uh, many number of welding lines so you will define the number of segments and they will be equal on lenses okay if you would like to make it from from uh, equal segments and if you would like to calculate it automatically by seg you will remove this checkbox so now we discuss the uh, three different type of elements now the fourth type which is shell with the spherical head uh, uh, regarding to division two. Here in this type, you will find uh, the uh, you will need to define the uh, 
thickness of uh, inside diameter of the shell and the head thickness right here. So it's a new field for the head thickness, uh, the connected head thickness. And by the same way, you can define this shell from one piece or from more different pieces. Another uh, type, which is shell from different pieces, and you can figure that uh, from here, SEG uh, will make automatic calculation and let you know that the delivered blade dimension, which is 9 meters, will not be enough to make this diameter, which is 7 meters. Usually, we use this type, which is shell from different pieces, in case of uh, storage tanks. Because in storage tanks, we need to calculate the number of sheets, their course. In storage tanks, the, the one course may include a large number of sheet blades. And we need to reflect each sheet blade of those in the bill of material. And we need to control the length of each blade of those. So in this time, if you will use a storage tank, you can define the required number of segments or the required number of blades. For example, here if we will define uh, five uh, number uh, five blades and make update. Now SEG automatically calculate the last blade means so let's define the length of each blade and recalculate here. You can define in this type, you can define each blade length. So the first part, we will make it uh, four meters length. The second course, we will make it three meters. The third course uh, or the third blade on this course, we will define it as nine meters. And the last one will be calculated automatically. So in this type, you can define each blade on this shell course separately. Okay. They, all of them, with the same thickness. So you can take care about the name, shell from different pieces. Another type uh, available, which is shell from different pieces and the thicknesses and thicknesses. So in this time, which is shell from different pieces and thicknesses, you can define uh, each blade thickness. Usually this type uh, is used in the first course of the storage tanks because you may have uh, clean outdoor and this clean outdoor needs uh, a back uh, blade with uh, a greater thickness uh, not like the other blades on the uh, same shell course okay uh, another type which is shell from different pieces and sloped bottom okay this type uh, used on the uh, storage tanks if you have a vertical storage tanks with uh, sloped on one direction so you can use this chill type from different pieces and the slope at bottom another different types like thread pipe and uh, at the start the thread pipe at the end thread pipe threaded from the two sides connection point uh, as a nozzle for pipe and connection point as a nozzle from shell. Those types we will uh, discuss them because they are important in case of if you are need to make a nozzle on a nozzle. That means uh, in heat exchangers uh, and uh, some vessels, you you may need to make a connected nozzle to another nozzle, like a pressure gauge or a temperature gauge on the uh, one of nozzles that you have you may need to make a connection on so we will use this connection point on shell to make this type of uh, of nozzle now let's come back to the to the can and let's select shell and let's define the inside diameter of this shell define the thickness longitudinal welding line orientation the lens of this shell in this case let's for example make the shell with three meters and let's click save you will find that seg will inform you that the delivered blade uh, width is uh, two meters point that's the delivered blade 
things. So SEG will uh, prevent you from saving a wrong number. Uh, the three meters length is not a correct number because you are uh, governed with the delivered plate that you have. So let's click on OK and change this to be two meters and click on save. Here, that's the gap of the uh, well here, and you should have a value here. It's not possible to make it zero because it's a sheet metal. You should have a welding line. So you should have a gap value. Okay, now let's add another shell course, can't we? But in this case, we will uh, know one new more option. If, we, if you would like to make the can two looks like can one or other can if you have in this list you will select this checkbox which is select the bar the same so in this case we will make can two looks like can one in all dimensions okay if we click add if you come back to can two you can figure that it's automatically filled with the same dimensions now you will be able to change it so let's change the uh, longitudinal building line orientation, the length of this shell course, and click save. Let's add a new can, which is can T, and we will make it looks like can one in all dimensions. And let's click it. Now we have the second head uh, or the uh, the share the shell course with the same dimensions of can. One. Let's add the last head, which is the right head and the same we will make it looks like the left head and let's click add. now if we come back here you will find those dimensions are the same of the ellipsoidal head uh, uh, with the same of the left head one more option we will discuss it here for the convex direction of some elements like uh, uh, the heads or flanges or body flanges. You may need sometimes to flip the direction of the flange or the head. In this case, we will leave this checkbox as it is to figure out uh, the configuration of this head, how it comes. Now let's create the assembly by uh, selecting the assembly tab and clicking on the start button here. And let's uh, open uh, Autodesk inventor here you can figure that the uh, SEG will send the information to Autodesk inventor to start creating elements and make the uh, automatic assembly for the uh, equipment and you can figure that the elements are running behind you uh, no preview for elements during the creation and we will discuss this option. Here, if we take a section, now the main elements are done. If we take a section on the middle of the digit, here, you can figure that the, this head, which is the right head, takes the same configuration or the same convex direction of the first head. But we need to flip it, make it on the other side. So now we will use this option, which is flip. Now let's select the flip button, uh, flip the checkbox and click save. Now in case of start and come back to Autodesk inventory, you can figure that the direction of the head is changed. So that's the importance of flip direction in some elements like flanges, uh, blind flange head. So you can flip the direction of the head. Let's come back to the tutorial here. We create the uh, vessel with the diameter head and shell. Now let's add two nozzles on the left head. One of them is a long weld neck nozzle with four inches. Let's add a nozzle on this left head. So from SEG, we will select uh, the left head from the tree. Okay, and let's come back to elements. The same from here, from the toolbar. You can use this toolbar. Or you can use this element tab directly from here. So 
So at the beginning, you should select the main element. So we will select the left head to add attachments to it. Now let's select a nozzle, head nozzle. So let's add N1 nozzle. And from N1, let's select the required type. As mentioned here, the uh, type of the nozzle and the name of the nozzle, which is N1. The selected node here, name will appear. And here the available types of nozzles uh, on the head. Nozzle from pipe, nozzle from plate, or long weld neck nozzle. Self-reinforcement long weld neck, which is a uh, long weld neck with lips. Standard forged hub, or self-reinforcement forged hub, which is forged hub with lips. Integral nozzle connected to shell, uh, to head or self-reinforcement integral uh, nozzle. So let's uh, select uh, long weld uh, nozzle. And from here, let's select the rating and select the size to be four inches. And from here, let's define the offset from this center line, 400 millimeters. And let's keep the orientation as zero. From here, you will define the, if you would like to make it parallel or radial, set in or set on. And let's define the nozzle service. There's outlet. And let's click on save. Now, if we uh, open the uh, calculator, you can define the projection of this nozzle. As you can figure, sorry, let's close this. Here, uh, before opening this, the projection of the nozzle is measured from the uh, shell outside surface to the facing of the uh, nozzle. Uh, in case of long weld neck nozzle, too, it will be uh, the face of the raised face of the flange. In case of nozzle from pipe, for example, it will be the end of the pipe. So if we click on calculator, you can define the uh, projection of this nozzle measured from the seam line, not the seam line. As you can figure in this image, the projection, which is measured from shell outside, will be calculated automatically in this case. That's the calculated projection. So if we click on calculate, uh, SEG will start drawing this one and calculate the projection. So the projection of the nozzle, which is the projection from the outside of the shell, will be uh, 300. And uh, 32.7. Now let's click on save if we accept this value and if you would like to minimize it a little bit and recalculate like that and click save. Now you can figure this value is reflected here. Now let's click on uh, assembly and if we come back here you can figure that uh, SEG is loading something, uh, or uh, Autodesk Inventor is loading or calculating something. That's because it's uh, creating or make a rendering for the element during the creation on the high. And if you would like to make a preview for each element during the creation, we will uh, make uh, an option here by uh, from setting tab, you will open the app setting. And from parent preview, you will select this checkbox to make a preview or rendering for elements, parent elements, which is the main elements like head, shell, cone, flange, during creation. And uh, select the child preview. Uh, this checkbox will make a rendering for elements uh, for, for childs like uh, nozzles, saddles, any other attachment to a main element during creation. So let's select uh, child preview and click on save. Now let's come back uh, to this nozzle, which is N1, and let's define the weld setting. Here, if you select on set weld, you will be able to define the weld uh, value, which is a fillet weld A. Uh, you can make it single or double, double V, but in our case, it's a small thickness, so it's only single V, so you can define the value a and clicks now if we come to tables and open the nozzle table you can figure that we have 
a new nozzle, which is N1, as uh, the surface of this nozzle is gas outlet, the size of the nozzle, the orientation, thickness, schedule, flange class, flange time, and flange facing. Uh, no blind attached, the projection of the nozzle, that's the value that we enter, the weld style, and the value of the weld style. Okay, and we will learn more how to control the uh, those columns if you would like uh, to control the columns and export some columns only to your drawing, not all of this stuff. Now let's add another nozzle, but this one we will add a nozzle with external and internal projection. So let's add a nozzle head type B. This type includes internal and external projection. As you can figure in N1, you have only an external connection point. So you can connect another point or another element to the facing of this flange. You have an external connection here, so you can connect anything here, like another flange, a gasket, or the elbow. So you can connect anything to the end of this elbow by selecting the external connection and adding another element. So let's add uh, a nozzle with internal and external projection. Let's add N2. Okay, so in this case, we will select a nozzle. You can figure that uh, before discussing the types. You can figure that for this nozzle, you have internal and external connection. So you can connect elements to the internal or the external uh, node of this element. In nozzle N2, let's select a nozzle from uh, Vibe. Select the size 6 inches. Let's add the reband. Let's make the reband width with 75 millimeters. Select the uh, scribble of this nozzle. Define the offset of this nozzle from visual center line. Define the orientation. Let's make it 180. Define the internal and external projection. So let's define the internal projection first and uh, the service of this one. Okay, and let's click save. Now, if we select the external connection of this element and click on flange, now we will add a flange to this one. So the first step, so let's close this again. So if you would like to add uh, an element to this nozzle and the external connection. So we will select the external connection of this node. And from here, we will add a new element, which is flange. So N2 flange. And let's click Add. Now we have a flange to the external connection of it. That's the list of flanges. As we discuss the type and the name of the node, now you will be able to select from many different standard types of flanges. So let's select weld neck resist face according to SME B16.5. Select the rating, size, the same size as the nozzle, the same scribble of the nozzle, and let's click save. Now if we click simply, you will find that the rendering of elements during creation will appear because we select the checkboxes of uh, rendering during creation. You can figure that we are just now updated, so updated and assembled with the nozzle. After that, it will be assembled to the final assembly of the visit. The same for flange. Now the flange is connected to the end of the nozzle. Now we need to control the projection of this nozzle. We need to make this projection looks like the top one. So let's come back to N2 again. And from the calculator, let's open this calculator and find the projection to make it looks like the projection of the first nozzle, which is N1. You can figure that SEG detects automatically that we have a flange connected to this nozzle and automatically calculate the height of this flange. So if you would like to make calculate the projection of this nozzle to the face of the flange from the seam line, we will write the projection value and click on calculate to make SEG draw and calculate the projection. Now we have the projection of the pipe only. 
if you take a look to the image on the on the back on the top right hand side you can figure that the projection of this nozzle measured from the visit uh, or the head outside surface to the facing of the uh, nozzle so this value will be reflected automatically here to make the projection of the nozzle from the facing of the flange to the seam line with 600 millimeters. Now let's click save and you can figure this value is changed. Now let's click start. You will figure that the projection is changing here of the nozzle. And you can figure that easily the projection become the same for those two nozzles. Okay, now let's add some uh, internal uh, attachments to. So let's take a section here. You can figure that we have this nozzle with internal projection like that. Now let's add uh, a standard reducer to the in inlet of this nozzle. So we will select N2, but in this case, we will select inlet to select the internal connection of this one. And the from elements, it's a standard reducer. And let's click it. Now we have a reducer to the inlet element. And from here, we will select the type of the reducer. Let's select standard centric cone. And let's make it six inches with 80 uh, scalable, three inches uh, branch, 80 scalable, and let's click save. Now, if we click start, we will get this connection here for the producer like this. Now let's add another connection like a T, connected T to this branch, and we will make another branches from the T. To know how we can deal with uh, the SEG3 and how we can control the elements inside. So from uh, internal connection, so let's select internal again to add another element uh, before in the two, uh, R1, which is the reducer, so let's select internal, and from here we will select T, so N2 T1. So the names it's related up to you, you can uh, write your uh, names as you like, but no repeated names available, so each element should have a unique name. Uh, so let's select N2, and from here we will select equal T, for example, and let's make the same diameter of the end of the reducer, which is three inches, the same scalable. And let's click on save. Now let's click on assembly. You can figure that the T now is connected from the end, not from the branch. If, we, if you would like to make the connection from the branch, not from the end, we can do that from by selecting the connected from branch. So we will select this checkbox to make this T connected from branch. Before that, take a look to the tree here. You can figure that uh, you have a branch and inlet too. So you can connect elements to those ends of the T, which is the branch and the inlet too. And in case of uh, selecting connected from branch and click save, you will figure that the connection from the two inlets only because the uh, branch will be connected to the reducer. So if we click on start and come back to the model, you will figure that the T now is connected to the reducer from the branch. Now let's add two elements to this uh, T from the two ends. So let's come back to inlet one and let's add an elbow. So inlet two, E1. 
and let's define this elbow as elbow with 90 degree long radius define the size and scribble click save we will add another t in to e2 and let's click save in case of before before uh, going uh, uh, to another step if you select uh, uh, this checkbox which is select uh, part the same uh, which will make those parts are the same and click add this node will be uh, moved to inlet one like if we make it like this you will find it comes here not to the inlet two to avoid that to avoid that you will create this node like this which is n2 e2 after creating it you will make it looks like e1 by selecting same as from this drop down list so you will select n2 e1 and click save okay now if we click on the assembly button we will create two elbows each one of them will be to the end of the uh, reduce uh, end of the t okay now we have those two elbows right here like that and if you would like to control the orientation of them you can do that by controlling the orientation of the elbows for example for this elbow we will rotate it with 90 degrees and click on save So before that I changed the type during during that I changed it to 45 so let's make it like e1 and let's make a refresh for the view and we can figure that it's 90 degree long radius so we will make it like this and click start okay now uh, in this case you can figure that we change it but it's still 45 degrees that's because uh, uh, good to to, to 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 get this issue during the trading to show you how we can deal with this the first step we can do it which is making a reset element you can figure that on seg we change it to uh, elbow with 90 degree long radius but it's still here 45 when we change it uh, by the wrong way to 45 it's still on the 45 but how to solve this issue we have two steps let's try the first step which is the uh, reset uh, inventor item let's click on reset inventor item to reset this element only which is this elbow and let's create the assembly again if we still have the same issue we will need in this case to close you can figure that it's a change it okay uh, but if you still have the same issue in this case that means uh, is uh, to disk inventor still restore in the memory some information and they cannot release so in this case we will need to close this easy software and the case autodesk close autodesk inventor and from the task manager let's open the task manager and be sure that all autodesk inventor instances are closed okay so you will need to open the task manager and be sure that all autodesk inventor instances are closed as we said because that autodesk inventor may store some information in the memory and cannot release or remove it now let's change the first elbow again so let's make the orientation of the first like that now you can figure that we have this elbow like this now let's add a man way uh, on the other hand 
So let's come back to SEG. And from the SEG tree, you can figure that as mentioned, we have different levels project, equipment, and main element. Inside the main element, you can figure that you have the attachments. Okay, I, I think this point is clear. Here now, let's add another nozzle to the right head. From here, we will select the right head, and from elements, we will select head nozzle. So let's make it as an N1. Now we have N1, so let's select it from the tree. Let's make it a nozzle from by 18 inches. Okay, and let's add a bed, the offset, the orientation, name. Okay, and let's click on save. Now let's add a flange to this nozzle at the external so let's add m1 flange and from here let's select the suitable type which is welding is the face and the same size same scribble and let's click on save and let's run the SMP. Now we have this manway right here, and if you would like to define the projection by the same way that we did, we will come back to the nozzle again, and from the calculator, we will calculate the projection of this nozzle, and it's easy now calculate, and give you the projection of the pipe, and if you would like to minimize it a little bit, you can do it like this, to calculate the correct projection of the pipe, yeah, which is will be reflected on the projection button here, projection text box. And let's click on start simply. And you can figure that. Uh, out. Emma, just a minute. What is a? What is? Yes, your question, please. Uh, my question is, what is the use of the tab, uh, the field called extra length on that uh, projection page? Okay. For example, if you have another uh, uh, element or another uh, by between the flange and uh, uh, and the uh, uh, and the nozzle, for example, if you have here an extra element like a by one for example let's move it before the flange move it before m1 flange now we have a pipe here and this pipe will be the same here length and let's make it with 300 millimeters like this okay now if we come back to the man way and open the calculator you can define the extra length here of the uh, of the second pipe, which is connected to the nozzle, to calculate uh, if you have an element instead of flange, for example, or, or L, one, something else, and you you would like to uh, decrease this value from the calculated projection of the pipe. So you will write the value of the of the length of the pipe right here and calculate so this value will be decreased from the projection of the pipe okay uh, did you get it again let's let's uh, if you have yeah. an element after the nozzle okay and this element with a defined lens and you would like to reduce this value from the projection of the pipe the projection here of the pipe which is measured from 
uh, I hope that you can see the prompt of the mouse. Yes. The prompt. Uh, uh, yes, uh, yes, we can. Yes, yes. Here, from the outside surface of the the head to the facing of the bike. So you need to make the projection to this point, for example, not that point. So you have 300 millimeters extra length here, and you would like to calculate this projection only. So you will add this value here after the uh, vibe, and uh, SE will calculate automatically the required projection of the nozzle here. That value will calculate that value. Oh. Yeah. Now let's uh, uh, let's add uh, attachments to this uh, nozzle, like adding, uh, uh, applying the flange, a gasket, and so let's modify this value again. So let's calculate because it's a change it when we click save the projection. Now let's uh, add a gasket. So from the other tab, we will select a gasket. So M1 gasket. Let's select the suitable type of the gasket, rating and size, write the material and click save. Now let's add a blind flange. So from here, we will select a blind, M1 blind. After selecting the blind, the information of this blind will appear here, and let's select the suitable type, painting, size, and let's click it. Now let's uh, uh, deselect this one at the beginning. After that, we will select it to show you the flip direction. It's the same of the head. The convex of the head was on the wrong direction, and we click on flip to make it on the Correct direction, the same for the blind flange. In case of uh, deselecting this, we will find the facing of the flange will be outside the cusp on the other side. So let's come back here and check this. Okay, if we take a look to the blind, you can figure that the rest of the face comes out, not on the facing of the uh, gasket. So we will need to flip this blind. So let's click on flip and click on save. Now when we click on start, we will flip the direction of the flange to make the facing on the other side. Okay. Now let's add some attachments to this manway, like uh, hand grip, David, and the stop bolts to make it a manway. Okay. Now let's select the blind flange. And if you select the main element, which is blind flange, you will find the attachments, the available attachments. Sorry. <clears throat> You will find the available attachments for this element. So let's add hand grip, M1 grip. Now let's uh, define the uh, dimensions of this grip. Let's minimize the spacing a little bit and let's add two hand grips. Let's click save. So those dimensions uh, according to the image on the right hand side. Click save the offset from the blind center line. Let's click start simply. Now we have those hand grips on this blind like this. Now let's uh, add stud bolts and uh, davit. Now to add stud bolts, let's measure first 
the uh, not spacing, which is the spacing between the two facing of this one, which is the value. So let's add stop bolt. You can select between UNC or ISONUTS, so let's select UNC. To find the total width. And let's click on save. Now let's start the assembly. Now we need to uh, uh, increase the length of this stud bolt. Okay, I I, uh, I make a mistake during the run, which is saving the element during running. You should uh, wait until the uh, uh, assembly done to make a save for an element during running. So let's run this element. Because during running, some information are saved in the project file. So uh, making a writing from two different uh, sources may cause a problem on the uh, project information. So we should uh, still uh, or wait until the uh, project is send the info until it's easy to send the information to the uh, project. Or to uh, to disk inventor after that you can save and if you would like to stop this you can do it by clicking on stop and you will find that seg will end up the mission of creating the uh, element after that will stop automatically not it will not complete the second step which is simply and creating the other parts okay now let's add a dev to this line so let's select and the blind flange, and from here, let's add David M1 David. You can figure that you have many uh, different estimated configurations of David, so you will select the suitable one for you. And let's click on save, and now let's click the assembly. After creating the David. We uh, we can control the orientation and the opening direction of this. Now we send it to be assembled on Autodesk Inventor. After assembly, we can figure that the orientation of this David is not correct. We need to flip it uh, 90 degrees. Okay, so we need to rotate it 90 degrees. You can figure that if you take a look from the left hand side, the David. Uh, Hinged point is down here, so we need to uh, rotate it 180 degrees. So let's come back here and change the orientation like this and click on start to rotate this David uh, 190 degrees. Like that. So if you would like to change the orientation direction, instead of now you can figure that the hinge point on the left side. And if you would like to make it on the right side, by clicking on opening the direction, you can flip the opening the direction. Uh, let's discuss one more option on the setting right now, which is uh, zoom extend option. This option, which is that one. Uh, automatically, SEG make uh, a zoom extend for elements during creation. And you can figure that the zo zoom out like this takes a bit. So when you make something like that, when SEG send or update something, it makes a zoom extend, automated zoom extend. And if you would like to uh, ignore that, you can make it normal. So no zoom extend will take place after update. Okay, that's 
an option. So let's click on that and click save. Now if we take a close view to this one, and from here let's change the direction of the nozzle and let's click save. Now let's click start. The direction of the David will be changed to the right hand side. And the view will not be zoom extended like that. It's the same. Okay, and you can figure that the data direction is changed. Now let's add uh, a name blade to this vessel. After that, we will proceed with support saddles, nozzles, and lifting glass. Now let's select the first shell course and from elements let's add a nameplate. From external attachments we will open this button and select nameplate to add a nameplate to this visit. So from here nameplate. And uh, Emma's never regarding the name. Again please because I am not hearing you. Uh, no, uh, we have a query regarding the David uh, assembly. Yes, go ahead. I'm hearing you. Okay. Uh, what? Uh, see, when uh, you uh, selected the type of David, uh, and uh, you know the David uh, David assembly was created. Can we control the dimensions of the David assembly, individual components of the David assembly? Yes, this David is an estimated part. Okay, so if you would like to make a detail for it, you will get a dimensions for this one. But in bill of material of SEG, it will appear as a one element. Okay, so if we open it like this, you will find this element as a one element. But you can, uh, by using those separate solids, you can uh, uh, isolate them and make uh, this uh, David as uh, separate elements with a different uh, bill of material elements. But in SEG, it will appear like this. If we open the bill of material of the SEG, you can figure that the David is an assembly and the material of this one is an assembly. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what we understand is from SEG. From SEG itself, we cannot directly control the dimensions of the uh, uh, David assembly, correct? Yes, yes, you cannot control the dimensions from the David assembly because it's just you can control the orientation and the uh, opening direction only. But if you have a standard David, uh, okay. you are using it, you can send it uh, to our technical team and we can add it to uh, the library and make an iLogic drawing for it to make uh, the drawing of the David easily for you. It will be generated uh, automatically after changing the dimensions of this David. Okay, we can make a support for you at this point if you would like to make a special uh, David detail uh, on SEG. I hope I hope this point is clear. Hello. Uh, Emma, we lost you there. Uh, your voice is cracking. Okay, again, let's say that again. Uh, if you have a special David, yeah. you can send us the details of yeah. this David with dimensions, and our technical team will do it and add it to SEG library to be able to use it anytime. Okay. Okay, it's an optional and for free. Okay. It's optional and? For free, for free. Not paid, not paid. It's for free. Uh, Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. So let's let's complete. Uh, come back to the name blade again. You will find many different types of name blades. Like this, name blade with support, two plates like that, with a single whip at the middle. 
or like that. So let's select a horizontal uh, bracket. Let's define the length and width, the thickness of the bracket, the projection, the location and the orientation. Let's add an ASME name plate. And let's click save. Now let's start the simple. Okay, so let's click on this. And I click on assembly. Okay. Now we have the bracket with the ASME and the client name blades. And if we take a look to we visit simply. We can figure that we have this name plate here. Now let's add support saddles. From SEG, let's select the first uh, shell course. And from elements, let's add a saddle. And let's click add. Now we have this uh, saddle. And you can figure that we have 12 types of saddles. Uh, as we discussed in our webinars, uh, let's open the types of saddle. For the saddle, we have 12 types inside. And for the different types here, the main four types, uh, as you know, in SEG, is the web configuration, uh, is with uh, no edges like like that one. In the second type, we have a straight edge like this, and that one. But in the first type, no straight edges, and you can add uh, outside ribs to this uh, type. In the second type, uh, the web uh, configuration includes this straight edge to the center of the vessel. On the uh, third type. Uh, the web includes a straight uh, edge like this, uh, perpendicular to the base blade. The fourth type includes a uh, lifting lock. In each uh, type of uh, the main four types, you can control the web uh, bottom width. You can make it with straight signs, or you can make it with a narrow or wide uh, bottom by controlling the BW parameter, uh, controlling the web location by selecting the type. So, so in this type, you have three different uh, cases by making the web on the left or right or on the middle. The same for the uh, other three types, the uh, web bottom with uh, three cases and the web location you can control. Okay, and other options for the uh, hole cut or the whip cut in case of uh, you have a narrow area to tie the nuts or the anchor, you can make a cut here uh, based on the uh, uh, client specs. Uh, some specs include this cut on the web. Uh, you can control the hole, you can make a straight hole or you can make it a slot hole. And another option, uh, you can make it without any holes by defining the number of holes by zero. If you add the number of holes zero, you will not get any holes uh, on the base plate. Sometimes in specs, uh, in some specs, the sliding saddle not includes any hole, just a teflon uh, uh, below it and flipped angles, uh, tightening it from the outside edges here and there.
you can control the direction of holes on the short side of the base plate or on the long side of the base plate you can control the number of the trips so let's now come back to the model and from here let's select the first type uh, which is a uh, whip on the middle and let's define the uh, saddle contact angle 150 the uh, height the thickness let's define the wear blade so let's add a wear blade by selecting this checkbox define the contact angle of the wear blade the wear blade width the thickness of the wear blade and the fillet on the wear blade if you don't like to make a fillet and make this wear blade with sharp edges just remove this fillet activation let's define the base blade length base blade width base blade thickness the hole diameter the uh, hole offset from the short edge hole offset from the long edge if you would like to make this saddle with a sliding holes, just select this checkbox. So we will select sliding support. Make the slot length with 30 millimeters. We have two holes per row. Okay. Now we will select a second row to we'll make a second row of holes. Define the location of the saddle and the orientation. The default value of orientation is 100. And 80 degrees so if you would like to make it a hinged saddle for example you can make it at zero and if you would like to make it support in a wall you can make it on 90 or uh, 270 degrees now let's add some uh, other options if you would like to make a cut on the saddle by selecting the whip cut you can add a cut and control the cut height width and fill it if you would like to add a mid ribs you can add it from here so let's add a mid rib and let's control the top uh, width of the rib. So let's make it 300. And from the bottom, let's make it 300. Let's add a uh, mid uh, rib. Let's add uh, intermediate rib with facing with 700. Let's click on save. Now let's click on start to start creating the saddle. Now we can figure that this saddle comes with a straight edges. That's because we didn't uh, control the uh, bottom width of this saddle. So there is an option to make this saddle controlled uh, at the bottom. This option, which is straight side. In case of removing this, uh, uh, selecting this checkbox, the sides of the saddle will be straight, as we discussed here. On this type you can make this saddle with straight sides so if you would like to control the uh, bottom width make it tight or narrow we will uh, control this checkbox by removing this checkbox from here remove the straight sides and write the suitable value let's make it a little bit smaller than the base plate is so this value is uh, good now let's click on save and when we click start the assembly you can get uh, the changes on the web and the outside ribs. Okay, now after creating this saddle, we will proceed with creating a new saddle with the same dimensions, but we will make it a fixed saddle with another location. Okay, so how we can uh, do that? So let's come back to the SEG3, and from here we will select the first saddle, but let's wait first 
to finish the assembly. Now the assembly is finished and the start button is up here again. Now from elements, we will add a new saddle. So let's add right saddle. And in this case, we will make it looks like the left side. And let's click add. And if we come back here to the right saddle, you can figure that the same dimensions is there. The only thing we will do, which is removing the sliding uh, holes and change the location of this saddle to make it 440. Because if we check the total length of the shells, we have 2 meters plus 1.4 and another 2 meters. So the total length of the uh, shell courses is 5.4. We have the first saddle uh, on one meter from the uh, left side, and the second saddle will be uh, one meter from the right side, so the location will be 400, uh, 4,000 and 400. Now let's click on Save and start the assembly to start creating the second saddle, but without sliding holes and with a different location. Now the second saddle is created. Let's close both opening. Now let's add uh, another nozzle here uh, and add some ribs to this nozzle and add another long nozzle with support ribs. So let's come back to N1, uh, the uh, CAN1, and from here let's add uh, nozzle. So let's add N E. And uh, let's select the size of this nozzle. Let's make it 24. The location of this one make it 100, the orientation make it 0, and let's click Save. Let's name this nozzle as like that. And let's add a flange to this one, and 3 flange. Click Add, select a type. And gasket. Let's add applying. Uh, let's make it clip. And now let's add a nozzle to this flying flange. So let's create this nozzle first. After that, we will change the projection of the nozzle to calculate the projection from the facing to the bezel center line. After that, we will add a nozzle to uh, the blind. 
and add some stiffening grips to this nozzle. Okay, now for uh, this nozzle, let's increase the uh, wheel plate a little bit and uh, add uh, a nozzle to this plug. So let's come back to the nozzle and let's change the location and increase the wheel plate a little bit. And on this blind flange, let's add a nozzle. So from here, you can add a nozzle with internal projection or nozzle with external projection only. So in this case, let's add a nozzle with internal and external projection. So let's add in four to this blind. So we have a nozzle on this blind like this. So let's make it a nozzle from five with two inches. And let's define the schedule. Define the offset. So let's make it on the uh, middle of the manway or in this blind. Define the projection and internal projection. So let's make the projection with two meters, for example. And from here, let's add uh, an external flange to this nozzle to define the projection of this one. So in four flange. From here, let's select uh, size and schedule. And if we come back to M4 and from the calculator, we will define the projection of this one by calculating the projection of the vibe. So the value here is a projection of the vibe. Okay, so let's click on that to calculate the projection of the vibe. And the same we will do it on the uh, nozzle here from the calculator. That's the projection from the center line. So let's make it one meter. So let's increase it a little bit like this. So that's the projection of the vibe. Let's click save. And now let's click start the assembly. The location and uh, of the nozzle and the wheel blade width will increase. After that, we will, uh, SEG will send the data of the uh, nozzle on the blind to be generated. Now we have this nozzle on the shelf like this. Now let's add some stiffening grips here on this uh, uh, nozzle. So let's select the main element, which is the shell. Okay, we have a nozzle which is in the three, and we need to make some uh, ribs, stiffening ribs to this nozzle. So let's select the main element, not the nozzle, because the attachments not include uh, not include sub attachments, only the main element. So we will select the main element, and from external we will select nozzle ribs. From the external attachments, we will select open uh, nozzle ribs to generate ribs for this nozzle, like. Like that, yeah. We will we will create ribs like this to this nozzle. So from here, let's add uh, M3 ribs and click Add. Now we have those ribs, and from here you can select between two different types. The first type is that five, just ribs on the vibe. Uh, Another type ribs uh, uh, rise to the flange like this. Okay, so we will select uh, nozzle rib and define the nozzle outside diameter. In case of uh, 24 inches, it's uh, one uh, 610. So that's the outside diameter of the nozzle. So we will define it like this. And the rebad thickness, we will define the rebad thickness. The bottom, the rib bottom width, which is that width. So let's make it 
a uh, little bit smaller than the uh, uh, bed width. The rib height, so let's define this rib height. The rib thickness, the bottom edge. Okay, so that's the bottom edge is this small edge right here, so let's make it 25. The top edge, let's make it 25. The location, it should be the same location of the nozzle. So here, the nozzle, those information from the nozzle, which is nozzle OD, the rebat thickness, those are the nozzle information and the same location of the nozzle, the same orientation of the nozzle. Now, if you would like to add some cross uh, rips, which uh, on the 45 degrees, if you would like to add some cross rips, just to click on this one and click save. Now, if we you click on assembly, we will start generating the uh, statement rips. Now we have those stiffening grips to this nozzle like that. Let's add a nozzle with uh, small diameter and uh, long projection with a hilly side option. After that, let's add stiffening uh, ribs to it. Now let's add another nozzle. So let's select the CAN3 and from here let's add M5. In four, and from in four, let's select a long weld neck nozzle, and let's make it with uh, two inches, no problem. The location orientation, but we will make it with a helicide option, so it will be shifted from the visible center line. Let's say. Uh, 300 millimeters and let's click on save. You can control the uh, offset direction in the clockwise direction or counterclockwise. So let's make it on clockwise and take a look from the back view here. And let's make the projection of this one with, uh, let's save this. And from the calculator, let's increase the projection like this and calculate the projection of the nozzle. Let's minimize it a little bit like this. And let's click create. Now we have this nozzle shifted from the visual center line and now we need to make uh, stiffening grips to this nozzle so let's come back to the shell not to the nozzle let's come back to the main shell which is in can three and from here let's add external uh, attachment but in this case we will select nozzle support rib, not nozzle ribs nozzle support rib and now we will know the difference between Here, if we select this one, you can figure that you can add ribs like this to the nozzle. So, uh, for the uh, two inches long weld neck uh, nozzle, we will get the outside diameter of this one. It's 84. So, let's come back here and define that to be 84. The rib width, which is the width of this rib. The rib thickness, rib angle, which is uh, uh, this angle, slope angle here. The location, it should be the same location of the nozzle and the same orientation. So if let's save this and come back to the nozzle. The nozzle location is uh, 100, uh, 1200 millimeters. Uh, orientation is zero and it's offset with uh, three mil, uh, 300 millimeters from the center line. And that's the projection of. So let's come back here 
and from uh, rips let's uh, define the uh, helicide option so we will define the helicide option the offset of that one and let's define the projection that we uh, get it from the nozzle and now let's add this rib to be uh, add one rib only and if you would like to add another uh, rib so let's add the other rib and let's click on save now let's click start the assembly Now we have those ribs like this and you can control the offset from the facing of the flange so if we come back here and by uh, controlling the rib offset which is uh, this value rib offset from uh, the projection value so we can make it uh, like that and if you would like to add another uh, ribs with uh, another angles you can uh, with another slope angle you can do that so for example we can do that with 45 degrees and let's make the offset for 300 sorry let's click save and now let's click start the simply and come back to the model again Okay, now we have, so you can control each uh, offset for each nozzle uh, separately, so you can figure that we leave this uh, with 30 millimeters, like that, that's the offset, and one of them we, will, we made it, uh, sorry, we made it with uh, 200 millimeters rip offset, another one with 300 millimeters offset, so you can control the offset and uh, the angle of each one separately like this okay now uh, one more important point before proceeding with uh, uh, the tail drones which is um, uh, sending the item number here if we open the bill of material you can figure that uh, it's easy uh, automatically calculate the bill of material and you can figure that we have in this equipment 138 elements including nuts and holes uh, and this is automatically detect the uh, identical items like we have two ellipsoidal heads with the same data same weight same material same description two shell cores uh, two uh, elbows all of that and give them the same item number for for ellipsoidal heads for example it gives them item number one so to update the item number here uh, to autodesk inventor we need to make one more step before proceeding with the uh, drawing by clicking on update item this step takes uh, around uh, one between one and two seconds for each element on uh, uh, of the Autodesk uh, inventor, so it's dependent on the number of elements in your project. It may uh, may takes uh, thirty or uh, thirty seconds or one minute, uh, maybe more if you have a, a, a larger project. It may takes more than that. Now we uh, make an update item number by sending the item number to uh, Autodesk inventor elements. To proceed with the next step which is generating the uh, drawings now this process is done to generate the drawings i hope i hope uh, until this step everything is clear during the 3d model and if you have any question during this uh, step kindly ask me before proceeding with the 2d drawings uh uh i have one query yes sure uh, 
that is regarding the gaskets uh, so uh, if what we have seen so far is you are adding gaskets is there a way to control the type of gasket because depending on what type of gasket you are using uh, your flange dimensions will vary whether you have an outer ring you have an inner ring and stuff like that for a spiral wound or if it's a cam profile gasket uh, without the rings all those things so can we control that would you mind to speak slowly please to to understand you Please, because uh, the voice, okay. uh, because uh, of the voice, I would like to hear you solely to understand. Sorry for that. Okay. Uh, no problem. Uh, what I'm asking is, uh, we have uh, different types of gasket. You have spiral wound, you have cam profile, so on and so forth. You might also have an octagonal ring gasket. So when we have different kind of gaskets, can we control the kind of gasket that we are using here? As mentioned here, on uh, when we discuss uh, the gaskets, the uh, available types uh, here it depends on the uh, uh, ASME types uh, or the standard types. Uh, if you would like to define something like a spiral wound or make a detail for that, you can make it separately, uh, not on SEG. But you can on the remarks define the. Uh, uh, more information about this gasket or the gasket material here on the uh, gasket, but it's uh, if you if you make a, a flat gasket or a, a ring joint gasket like like this, if you take a look to the image on the right hand side, uh, it's just uh, some information about the gasket, not in detail. Like uh, if you would like to make it with uh, inner. Uh, uh, Stainless steel inner uh, or outside or uh, in core uh, different material or so if you will make it in detail it's not available here but we can do it if you if you have some standard uh, configurations we can add it to a uh, CEG uh, library if you sub, uh, send us the information about that and we could help you to to know how to add it to your uh, drawing if you would like to make it by hand. Okay. Okay. Uh, my, uh, the next query that we have is, uh, we haven't yet touched on uh, PVLI, uh, how to import uh, this thing from PVLI. So is that, some, is that something that you're going to address after this or? Where is the issue please? Because I don't understand. Where is the issue? No, PVLI, uh, you said uh, that uh, like what we understand is we can import data from PVLI software directly. Not PVLI, from the exported access database file from PVLI. Yeah, PVLI okay. export access database file. So we read this access database file in SEG. So are you going to demonstrate that here? How do we do that? No. If you would like to arrange another meeting, we can do. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, so, uh, okay, fine. So, what? Uh, you will just in like find some. You will already find some tutorial videos regarding to regarding that on our channel. If you check our okay. channel, you will find some tutorial videos regarding that and sessions uh, for some of our customers talking about the BB Elite module and how we can deal with it. Okay, fine. Okay. Any issues be, be before uh, proceeding with the uh, drawings? Uh, no, we can proceed. Can okay. Can... Now let's make the general arrangement drawing for this vessel. So from here, each node on SEG3, you can make a separate drawing for it by clicking on the node and right click and select the drawing. Each node you can do that. So you can make a detail for the rib, you can make a detail for saddle, for nozzle. In this case, we will select the vessel and select uh, from the shortcut menu, select drawing and select create drawing. And from here, let's select the drawing size. So let's select A1 from the format of the drawing. And from for the orientation of the drawing, you can make the drawing landscape or portrait. 
you can control the location of the title block. Okay. And from the active view, you can select the required views in your drawing and the spacing between views. Here, let's select uh, an elevation view and tag view. Let's define the spacing between them is four centimeters. So all the spaces are defined in centimeter. And for the uh, orientation view and scale, here we will define the elevation view orientation. So let's discuss this point in detail. If you would like to, uh, let's open the assembly again. Here, if we take a look uh, to this uh, vessel from the left view, here, it will be like this. If we take a look from the back view, it will be like this. So if you would like to make the elevation view, so from here, from this uh, uh, checklist uh, or uh, this uh, list, you can select the elevation view orientation. Here, that's the elevation view. So the elevation view will uh, looks like from left view. So the elevation view will be like this from that view, from the left view. Okay, I hope this point is clear now. And if you make it from back, the elevation view will be like that. So if we make it from back, the elevation view view here will be like that. Okay, so you select the orientation view of the visual from here. So let's select the left view. From style, you can select the style of lines. If you would like to make it, uh, to make the header lines visible or only the uh, visible lines uh, appear. Okay, here the hidden lines and here only the visible lines. And if you would like to make the uh, body shaded, it takes a color, a real color, you can make it shaded from here. That's the location of the elevation view. And uh, we will make uh, some changes to know how we can control this. So at the beginning, let's make it on 1330. That's the scale of the vessel. From here, we will, uh, all of those values can be changed after creating the drawing. If you uh, find the scale is need to be minimized or increased, you can come back and control it from here. The same for locations. Now we will add some uh, tables to our drawing, like the bill of material table, the design data table, flange table. Let's add the nozzle table, fitting table, gasket table. And from here, let's add some nodes. You can, uh, there are some uh, standard nodes you can edit or modify or delete. So if you would like to delete a node, for example, just click on delete, select it and click on delete. And if you would like to modify, just click on it, select the row. After that, click on edit to be able to edit it. After that, click on add to uh, update that. And if you would like to import uh, a new nodes, for example, you can do that. So let's save this and come back to the desktop here. And let's add some notes on Excel sheet. So from here, let's add notes. How to import a notes from Excel sheet? You directly edit or write the notes here. One column only, only one column. You will add your data like that. After that, save. Now you have the uh, notes. Not, uh, don't write one, two, three, just in each row you will write the uh, content. After that, from uh, SEG, if you open the drawing again, select the same node, which is a visual, and from drawing, select the drawing. And from uh, tables, we will select the nodes, and from import, we will select the uh, nodes. Uh, the Excel sheet here, and when you click in open, you will find that do you want to, do, to delete the old notes? If you click in yes, you will delete the old notes. If you click in no, you will add the 
the nodes that you add. So let's click on No. Now you can figure that we add those nodes, as those nodes here. So let's delete them like that. Okay, so now you know how to add from uh, external Excel or modify it directly from the drawing. Now let's uh, open the welding detail form. From here you will find that you have a huge library of welding details. Just select the suitable welding details for uh, your project. So from here we have this connection for the cone uh, to uh, nozzle, centric cone to nozzle, and that one. We have uh, a bad with, um, sorry, we forget to make the boot. We come back here, oh, yes. We have a boot right here. And so let's come back to the model and create this boot and add a nozzle on the boot head and vortex breaker. So let's close this, save changes, and come back to the model. From here, let's select CAN2. And from here, let's add a new nozzle. So let's make it uh, boot. From here, let's select this nozzle as a self-reinforcement user, self-reinforcement uh, forged hub, or self-user-defined uh, forged hub with lips. And let's define the outside diameter of this one, the thickness, the location, orientation. We will make it at the bottom. Let's change the hub height, the hub thickness, bevel height, the width of the lip. Let's make it 50 millimeters. The thickness of the uh, insert pad or the lip. So let's make it 14 millimeters. It will be greater than the thickness of the shell. The thickness of the shell is 10 millimeters. So we will make this label with 14 millimeters. The fillet at the bottom and the fillet at the top. Let's make a chamfer on this edge, this edge, because uh, the thickness of the shell is 10 millimeters and this thickness is 14 millimeters. So we will make a chamfer with 4 to 12. And let's click on save. Now let's add a shell to it. So let's make it a can. And from here, let's select shell, find the inside diameter, the thickness, and the length. Click on save. Let's add another head. So, head. click on save. And from here, let's select an ellipsoidal head with inside diameter and straight flange and let's make it flipped now if we click on a simply to start generating the this nozzle with lips Now we have this boot assembled right here, like that. Now let's add a nozzle and add a vortex breaker, this one. So from SEG3, we will select the boot head. Okay, so we should select the right node, which is the boot head. And from nozzle, we will select the nozzle and name it as D. It will be the drain nozzle. Make it long welding nozzle, two inches. Offset zero from the bezel center line. Let's click on save and from the calculator, let's calculate the projection from the same line. It's okay for us right now. And let's click on assembly.
Now we have this nozzle on the bottom end. Let's add a vortex breaker on this nozzle. Let's measure first the inside diameter of this nozzle. It's uh, 50 millimeters point eight. So let's come back here and select the boot head. And from elements, let's add a vortex breaker. So from internal attachments, let's add a vortex breaker. Now let's define the vortex breaker dimensions. It's a zero offset from visual center line. Orientation is zero. Thickness is six millimeters. The length of this plate, let's make it 120. The height here, let's make it 50 millimeters. The depth, let's make it 65. And if you would like to make it with cut, make this depth smaller than the height. So it will not be with an edge like this. It will be with cut on this plate, the inner diameter. If you would like to add a perpendicular plate on this one, just select the perpendicular plate. And if you would like to add a cover from here and with six millimeters thickness, let's click on a simply to start creating the vortex paper on this head. Now we will take a section to figure out the configuration of this. Uh, let's take a section here. Like that. And you can find this vortex breaker inside this nozzle, like this. If we open it. You can find that this vortex breaker, you have one blade here and the two other blades, perpendicular blades and top ring. If you would like to remove the cover, for example, you can remove the cover from here. And if you would like to make this with cut, make this one with cut, not with a straight edge as below here, just a cut. We will make the depth smaller than the height, so let's make the depth. Plus 40 millimeters and click on save. Now we remove the top cover blade and make a cut here. So click on save and now we will start the simply. Now you can figure that we have a cut here on this one and the cover blade is removed. So you, you have many different con configurations you can control uh, on it. And if you would like to increase uh, this cut to make it outside the outside diameter of the nozzle, you can change the uh, inner diameter. So for example, if you would like, let's measure this. So that's the outside diameter, sorry. Here okay, it's 84, so let's make it 90. So inner diameter, let's make it. 90 and click on start to make the uh, the cut is uh, greater than the outside diameter of the nozzle. So the cut come like this. Okay. Now we have uh, a nozzle like uh, or a boot like this, and you can add another uh, another. Uh, nozzles to this uh, can like in our example here we have nozzles on this shell so you can do that by selecting the shell itself which is can 4 okay which is located on the boot and add any elements you would like to add now let's add some lifting lugs to this uh, model from here we will select uh, can 1 and from elements, let's select uh, one of those uh, lifting uh, uh, lugs. Let's select the cross lifting lug, which is uh, type 9. So from here, let's select plug 1. 
and from plug one here we will uh, define some dimensions like length width radius if you would like to add a weir blade or cooler we can define it from here so let's define the lens the radius lifting rectangular lens which is the spacing between the uh, uh, the lifting lugs in the longitudinal direction so let's say we will uh, put a lifting lug here on uh, this shell course is uh, two meters less so let's add a lifting lug on 1.5 meter and the same here uh, 1.5 meter from that so we have a spacing between them 50 millimeters plus like that and so the spacing between them will be two meters point four so we will define this like that and define the offset e dimension thickness so let's uh, define uh, those dimensions uh, like that and define the uh, location so the first one will be on Oh, 150 the orientation will be zero and now let's click on start to start assembly the, uh, this lifting lug the cross lifting lug and let's uh, increase the wear blade a little bit okay so let's increase it a little bit because it's uh, near to the uh, edge of the lifting lug. Now let's remove the section view. That's the lifting lug here. So let's increase the wear plate a little bit. So let's make it like this. And let's increase the edges, which is dimension K. Let's make it 50 and uh, K. Let's click save. And now let's click start simply. Okay, now let's uh, come back to the CAD model after uh, finishing this. And let's add the other lifting lug. Okay, now we have this one. It's uh, suitable dimensions, suitable location. Now let's add another one on the other side, how we can do that. So it's easy. So let's select can one. And from here, let's select the same type, which is lug type mine lug 9, uh, lug 2, and we will make it looks like lug 1, okay, and click add. But here we will select it to be on the other side. So we will select this checkbox to make it on the other side and click save. Now if we click it simply, we will create a new lifting lug, looks like the first one, but on the other side, on the uh, counterclockwise direction, of the visit. Now we have those uh, two lifting lugs like this. Okay, now let's add another two lifting lugs right here on this area. So let's come back here and select CAN1. Select the same lifting lug, which is uh, lug 9, and from here, lug 3. We will make it looks like lug 1, but with small change. Let's reverse the direction to make it on the other side and increase this value to make it, uh, let's uh, add the length of the uh, force. So we will add this value plus the current location plus uh, 50 millimeters so that's the new location of the second one okay 300.50 and let's click simply Now we have this lug right here. 
So I think we need uh, to calculate again the location. I think the location we calculated in the wrong way. So here the uh, location of this one is 1,500 plus 50 millimeters, which is from here, from the center line here to this one. So uh, it should be two meters plus 1,400 plus uh, uh, 500. So it should be 3,900. So we need to change this. It should be 900 like this. And let's create the last lifted lug from elements. Let's add lug four. And let's make it looks like lug three in the same location, but it will be on the other side. So it's the same, but on the other side. So let's click save now. Click reassembly. Now we have, uh, as you can figure, if we take a look from the top view, we have a cross lifting lug to lift this equipment from one single point. Now, uh, as we discussed, we should update item numbers. So if we check the bill of material here, now the total number of elements uh, are increased here. Now, to update the item number, we need to open the assembly tab and click on update item number to reflect the modification on the inventor elements before proceeding the draw. Now let's wait uh, seconds to uh, finish this process. After that, we will proceed with our draw. Okay, so let's uh, close this uh, I think it's still dated, so let's close this and start the updating again. This step is very important in case of you will uh, add item number balloon to the items in your drawing. Like if you would like to mention uh, the item number for, for elements to refer it to the bill of material. And we will know how we can uh, do that, inshallah, in our uh, drawings after finishing this process. Uh, any questions during the uh, update? Okay, the update is done. Now we will open the drawing. So from here, we will open the drawing of additional arrangement and let's come back to the uh, tables. And from here, let's select 
the suitable building details that we would like to add it. Okay, and from here, let's add those details and click on save. Now let's add another table so like client uh, document list. That. Okay, click add. And for the visual document list, we will add mechanical Okay. Let's add saddle calculation. Let's add and let's modify this so edit dwg and and this one edit dwg now let's close this and from the title block, we will define the drawing name. The general arrangement. And from here, we will add the revision table. So from here, we will add revision zero. And it should do review. Okay, and let's click on save. Now let's delete this empty row and let's add new rows like this. And from here, from the style table, we should go to this tab and save information here. And uh, for this tab, if you would like to make uh, new sheets on the same drawing, for example, if you have a huge information in, in the same drawing, and you would like to separate the bill of material in a separate sheet. And if you would like to separate the design data and some other tables on a separate sheet, you can do that by using uh, this option. So design one give you one sheet, design two give you two sheets, and you have the ability to control the second sheet size. Design three give you an option to make three sheets, and you have the ability to control sheet number two and the sheet number three, and you already defined the sheet number one here on this form. Now let's uh, create uh, the drawing by clicking on create. Now uh, SEG will create the template and the border, changes the size of the drawing, create the views, start adding tables so like nozzle table, bill of material table, filling data, adjust the location and the style of the table. Now the design data table, the notes table. Nozzle table. Ahmed, may I interrupt you for a minute? Yes, sure. Uh, uh, so this template that you're using, this is a default template. So can we have custom templates? Because sometimes we have our customers requesting the drawings in specific uh, formats. So is that possible? Yes, as, as we discuss on uh, this presentation, uh, on the tool course, if we come back here,
uh, when we discuss uh, the toolbars uh, for the uh, the tabs here we discuss uh, on the setting tab we discuss the custom uh, drawing template here by using uh, this one you can import or this feature you can import your custom uh, drawing and uh, on one of our presentations we uh, we discuss that in deep and create a new uh, drawing so let's come back here Not on this one, so it's yes, yeah. So from this from this form, you have the ability how to create uh, how to create a new uh, border and the title block. So it depends um, on your project and how you can import it, use it as a reference drawing in SEG. And we uh, in this uh, Webinar, we did uh, a new border and a new title block and import it to uh, SEG library to be, e to be able to use it in your project. So you will import it from this form and you define some information here. Uh, after that, you will be able to use it as a reference group. And we could make uh, one on this session, no problem, on this course. Now, after creating the uh, the general arrangement drawing, that's uh, all of that is automated up to this point. Here, you can figure that the uh, title block data is changed, like the drawing number, the job number, the location, uh, the project name, uh, the uh, visual service and visual number, uh, the revision table, bill of material uh, table. All of that. I uh, uh, I'd just like to interrupt you for a minute. Uh, Fauzan, are you available? Uh, yes, I am available. Uh, Fauzan, uh, now the point is uh, actually uh, a few of our members will have to leave now because uh, you know uh, the schedule time is done. So, is it possible for us to continue this some other time now? Mm, see, first of all, the session uh, was planned just for three hours which was an orientation session. So yeah. if you want uh, something more than I need to check with Ahmed only. That's what I'm saying. We like to finish this session, uh, whatever Ahmed is trying to tell us. But unfortunately, no, because uh, we've, uh, we're kind of uh, running short on uh, you know time and a few of our users have to leave now. That's why. Okay, because uh, see, we will complete this drawing part and we are already doing a recording of this, right? So. Definitely, I will be sharing you the recording, which can be seen later as well. Okay. Will that be fine? Because since now he is into the drawing uh, generation part, uh, maybe if we can finish it and then someone from your team who is, who is about to leave now, they can see it in the later stage once I share the recording. Uh, Will that be okay? okay? Fine. Uh, yes, that will be fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, uh, Ahmed, in that case, my queries to uh, to you. Uh, how long do you take? It will take uh, you know uh, for us to finish the rest of the session. Maybe uh, uh, less less than thirty minutes, inshallah. Less than fifteen minutes, you said. Thirty thirty minutes. 30 minutes. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay, now. Please, uh, please. Yes. Uh, please continue, please continue. Okay. Now, if, we, if you would like to change the scale of this view, uh, make it a little bit uh, bigger so we can change it from one to 20 to make it one to 18, for example, and move this view a little bit to the left hand side and make it a little bit down. So from here, let's come back to the drawing view again. And from here, we can change the location of uh, the view. So let's make it uh, 27 on the X direction. And on the Y direction, let's make it uh, 
28 and the scale let's make it 1 by 18 and click on create now the scale you can figure that it's changed the location the same so the scale is here is it changing and the location of the view now let's add some annotations to this uh, vision like uh, uh, the uh, center lines or the tan lines for heads so from here let's select the tan line for this head like that and for the boot head the same for that one or the other view let's add some center lines for those nozzles Okay, now let's adjust those center lines for the vessel and for this nozzle. Now let's measure some dimensions. As we make it from the seam line, you can make it from seam line, but usually we will define it from the tan line like this. The same for that one. It will be measured from the tan line, same for saddles. The saddle spacing. Just adding some dimensions, like the inner diameter. Let's add some, uh, add reference point to measure the dimensions. Continue, so let's measure from here and there. Let's continue up like this. And let's move them down. Okay, let's move this one down here. Now, how to add a tight uh, balloon for the bill of material? By selecting the balloon from here, and let's just select item number and bill of material. And uh, from this form, you will select the parts to define the part item number, not the structure, not the total structure. You will need to define parts only. So from here, you will select the parts only and click on OK. So if we select this item, you will get the uh, item number, the correct item number based on the bill of material of the SEG. So let's check this. For example, here we have this head, it's item number two. So if we come back to the bill of material and check item number two, we have one element. This element is an ellipsoid head. It's uh, ellipsoidal head with inside diameter of 700 millimeters, the nominal thickness 10 millimeters, the minimum after forming 8, and slit flange 50, material and weight. So let's check another element. So from here, let's check this element, for example, but you should you should be sure that you select item number in the material. If you select, for example, standard balloon, you will find it 46. So when you will check it with the bill of material, you will notice this number is not correct 64 it's a vortex break so you should modify it to be so during the selection you should select it as item number in bill of material okay so it's 37 now so if you come back to item 37 
okay it's a rib blade height is uh, 250 which is 240 thickness is 10 millimeters and weight of this end so you should select item number in the look this part okay now to add uh, a nozzle tag you will select the balloon and from here you will select nozzle tag so if you would like to add a tag to this nozzle just select the nozzle directly and by click on control and move you will make it straight like this so add a balloon like this the same for this one like sorry continue another one here so in case of uh, you cannot select the nozzle in case if you cannot select the nozzle for example uh, in this case you try to select the nozzle but you are not uh, in this case we select it but in case of you are not able to select it so let's select the nozzle balloon and select this uh, flange for example so let's select the flange after that you can select the element itself directly like that and remove the old button. okay so let's add the name blade station the balloon of the name plate now let's add some dimensions for the nozzles projections like that okay so, so now you can uh, add so for for this case for example if you would like to add so this center line we need to modify it sorry it should be to the outside here So let's add the location again, like that. And let's add the nozzle balloon number. So let's select the nozzle itself and the manway, like that. And let's remove this balloon for the flange. So we have two nozzles like that. Now, after uh, modifying the other dimensions uh, you can generate a uh, complete drawing for the uh, equipment if you would like to add some details in this drawing like uh, if you would like to add a detail for this forged uh, hub in the same drawing you can make it uh, easily and you can make it in a separate drawing in case of you try to make it uh, like this select the boot node from here and create a separate drawing for it but right now let's let's add it on the same drawing so how we can do that if we open the assembly of the vessel and let's open the uh, boot itself from here this boot and let's come back to the drawing and add this view so let's take a look from the top view and let's minimize the scale 1 to 10 <coughs> which is put up detail sorry okay so let's move this down here and let's take a quarter section so from here let's take a section sorry so let's take a section from the middle like that and we will move it up right here if you select a projection like this you will make a cut like that but if you make it aligned you will make a line the projection like this quarter section like that so you will get this section and now you will be able to add dimensions on this view so let's move it a little bit here and 
add some dimensions to this one. So from here to there, little, and to the end, let's add the inside diameter, the outside diameter. Let's add the thickness instead of that. So let's add the thickness, the half thickness, the length, okay. And let's add the fillets here and there. And if you would like to make a detail for this end, you can make it by that way. So let's add some dimensions here. So that's a chamfer value. If you would like to make that as a label, you can make it like this. And if you would like to make a detail for, uh, let's say, the uh, saddle, you can make it on the same drawing. So let's uh, open the saddle drawing like this. And you can import a view for it right here. So let's change the scale of this one. Okay, like that. And you can make a projection from it here. And if you would like to make the un, uh, all uh, visible lines, you will uh, make it visible from here or shaded, so it's an option. If you would like to make a section to make the base blade visible, you can make a section like that to detail the saddle. And let's add some dimensions. If you would like to make a detail for that, you can do it. So let's select the view again, select the correct view. With the scale one to four. The same for detail view. Okay, so by that way you can generate uh, a detailed drawings for it. Now let's uh, discuss uh, something uh, about the detailed drawing if you would like to make it as a separate drawing. For example, let's open the uh, fixed saddle. And from here, let's click on drawing and create drawing. Let's select the size of drawing the views let's make two views and as we discuss here if we open the right saddle if we open the right saddle the elevation view in case of selecting a lefty view it will be that view but we need to make it as the elevation view we need to make it as that view so we should select the front view so from here you select front to make the elevation view as a front view, leave those values and make the scale one to 10. And from here, let's add the bullet material. We will not need building details or notes. And from here, let's make it silent detail. DWG, and from here, let's make it division zero. 
is for review. Okay. Let's remove this empty row. And from here, we should save that and create drawing. Now we have this saddle detail with a bill of material. If you would like to uh, increase uh, the scale and move it a little bit, as we discussed, we select the element again from the tree and from drawing. Let's move this, uh, this revision view a little bit up and uh, to the left hand side, so the scale. To discuss the location, for example, let's make it on zero and zero, okay? And click on create. You can figure that the location of the first view, the middle, the midpoint of this view will be located on zero and zero. So the location here on of from this form, defining the location of the view. So let's make it on uh, 1.5, for example. And on the y direction, let's make it uh, 27 or leave it 25. And let's make the uh, scale 1 to 8 and check this view again here. Yeah. The spacing between views, we can define it from this button here, the activation view. So you can control the spacing between views. So if we make it zero, for example, and click on create, those two views will be with zero spacing between them. So if you would like to increase this spacing, you can define it from the activate view. Let's make it six and Let's move it a little bit up. So from here, let's change the Y location to 28 and click create. Now let's add some dimensions to this saddle. Like let's add a center line here. And let's add dimension for the contact angle of the saddle. And the wear blade and the contact angle of the saddle. So select this point, center point, and that point. Sorry. And select this one. One. And this point to define the saddle contact angle. Now let's define the height of the saddle. The height of each rib like this, the thickness of the base blade, the wear blade width, base blade width. So let's move this title a little bit below here. Oops. If you would like to add the center line of holes, you can add it on this view and define the spacing like that. And uh, the width thickness, the wear plate thickness. Okay, add some welding details, like if you would like to show the weld with the shell. So it's like that. So let's move this dimension a little bit here. Another will be detailed for the saddle. Like that. Okay, so if you would like to make a detail for uh, the cut here, but on a different level, not on the uh, facing of the base plate, so you can make a cut here, like that, here. And if you would like to add some uh, weld fillets, you can do it from here. So let's add a fillet weld and eight, so you can make a fillet weld like that. So many different options, you can make it after that by creating the drawing. On Autodesk Inventor, you can make anything after that. Some more options uh, after creating this drawing, you can add the balance, bill of material balance. So you can add the uh, item number. So you should select the parts only, not structure, parts only, legacy. So you can select 
this. And if you check the block material, item 33, for example, item 33, which is a base plate, it's here, it is a base plate with lens width and thickness and weight. Okay, so uh, let's come back to the GA drawing. Uh, if you would like to uh, add some uh, standard welding details uh, uh, or uh, some blocks, some, some other blocks, for example, uh, let's uh, add a key view for this result. So let's take that one as a key view. So from here, we will add this view from plan view like this. Let's change the scale and key plan. So let's move it down here. So now we have this key plan and we need to add the north direction on it. So from here, let's open the uh, welding uh, or drawing resources and from sketch samples, you have two different styles from uh, north direction. That's one of them. And another one, which is that one of the north direction. And if you would like to add your own block, you can add it to this standard blocks. Here the same for welding details. You could add that welding details here. Like that. And that's for circumference uh, welding lines. So if you would like to add it to your drawing, you can add it like this. Continue for the circumference welding lines like that. And the four longitudinal building lines that we defined, which is that one. So you can define it like this. So that's the longitudinal building line. And you could add uh, your own styles like this. For the nozzle uh, details, those are the building styles. And you could modify it for each nozzle. So for example, if we come back to uh, M3 here, we didn't define the welding style, so you can define it here and define the uh, weld uh, size to make it appear on the welding detail. Uh, many different options to control the develop material style and uh, nozzle table style. If you, if you would like to remove some uh, columns and keep uh, some columns only, so you, you have the ability to, to do uh, that. Now, in this uh, training, we create the general arrangement, uh, the 3D model of this equipment and know how to make internal and external projection for nozzles, how to make same as element, how to add support trips for nozzles, how to make uh, lifting lugs, make a detail for the uh, uh, forged hub with lips, uh, and how to make a detail for it uh, on uh, Autodesk Inventor Drawing. Uh, how to generate the bulk material uh, here and checking it before uh, exporting it to, to the drawing. How to make the update item number. How to generate the general arrangement drawing and how to make a detailed drawing for the items. Uh, I hope uh, we can cover uh, a lot of points during this uh, training. And if you have any questions or queries, kindly uh, contact Fauzan and you will uh, take care of them. Any other questions? Uh, that might be a good for now. We don't have any additional queries. Hello? Hello? Hello, yes? Hello? Yes, I'm hearing you. You can ask. Uh, yes, sir. We, we don't have any queries right now. Okay. So, uh, we can yeah. close the session. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Have a nice day.
Thank you, sir. Okay. Fawzan, uh, we will uh, end this session, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Thanks, Ahmed, for your time. Mm -hmm.